basic shapes. All right, notice snaps on, and I could snap this new piece of geometry into the center of the world. I'll probably leave that on for a little bit as I uh, mess around with the basic shapes of Blender. All right, box modeling. Very important that you know your basic shapes, okay? And we'll go through each and every shape that I feel or deem important, and I'll show you why they're important as we start joining them together to form other shapes. And it's all about shape, really. Um, how do you get a shape out of a cube into a different kind of shape so when you do build a mesh, it's very easy. Let's say if I wanted to connect a sphere to a box, you know, how do you do that? So let's look at the basic shapes first. The first basic shape we're going to look at is this one. Okay. Now, obviously, what would happen is if I took this shape and I tried to build something out of it, there's a problem with it. Okay. And the problem lies here. If I jump into wireframe, you can see that this thing ends in a polar cap. Okay, That means all the vertices toggle into the center of it and it causes some extraordinary vertice to happen. Okay, And you can look at it right here in edit mode. Here's the extraordinary vertice. And if I pull this up, well, now I have to take snap off. If I pull this up, you can see that it is just a bunch of triangles that all meet together. Now, this is not very good as far as box modeling goes. Okay, we, we try to avoid this like the plague, especially triangles. And th there's a reason for that. Like if you want to jump into a sculpt in Blender, you can basically say, well, I can't really sculpt in this area very well because of this extraordinary vertice. Now there is applications for this design. Let's say if I wanted to make an eye, yes, it's it's already designed very well for an eye. In fact, you know, from here to here, this would be the iris and the rest of the eyeball. So if you wanted to make a quick eyeball in Blender, yeah, great design. But anything else, not very practical. So how do I get that or this into that? All right, well easy. First off, let's add a modifier to it. Multi-resolution. And you can see if I hit subdivide once, and maybe one more time, I get that design. Now there is a flaw to multi-res. If you hit tab, you can see that it goes away. So multi-res cannot exist within edit mode. Well, how do I keep it? I can hit apply. And now it's going to always be a ball. If I hit tab, you can see that it's a ball here. All right, now let's look at another way to do this. Let's create another box. This time, I'm going to add a modifier called subdivision surface. works kind of like multi-res in the fact that I can just hit subdivisions and make the sphere. When I hit tab, I get this. So a subdivide surface basically states that at its lowest, you're going to get this design. okay, And at its highest, you're going to get the preview quality in, on the inside of the center. Well, this is a pretty nifty trick in the fact that now if I go to face and let's say I show you a basic command called shift E that's extrude by the way. If I right click go to scale scale it to the center you can see that it is a box, but its subdivide surface on the inside of that box is now a preview. 
So a lot of people do model this way. They model in the fact that they have a subdivision uh, modifier on there and they can just go at it. This is a great way to do organic modeling. Now, anytime I want to keep that piece, I can just hit apply. Aha, but you have to be in object mode to apply it. So there we go. Now we have this bowling pin thing. All right, we'll get into organic modeling a little bit later. But for right now, just know that the premise of this video is to be able to produce a sphere that has good mesh good resolution in uniform geometry. Okay, so you're going to hear me say this has good uniform geometry a lot. Uh, uniform geometry means that basically all the squares or vertices or faces have a kind of relationship together that is uniformed. Okay, so this face is about the equal size to this face, the equal size to this face, and they're all quads. Um, unlike this one, that if you go, you'll notice that it's not a very good uniform geometry piece because of the fact that um, quads down here start getting all elongated by the time it gets to the extraordinary vertice, and then it starts getting triangulated. So this is a non-uniformed piece of geometry. This is a uniformed piece of geometry. Again, that's very important when we get into sculpting later on. Okay. So, uh, your first actual piece of geometry need to be a sphere. Let's move on to a couple others in the next video.